boom, we're back. Oh, the boom is back. Thanks, everybody, for your comments. Doug was wrong. I was right. 10 to 0. That's right. 10 times in the past, I was right, and he was wrong every single time. <laughs> or at least that's all I remember. Anyway, here's today's giveaway. Maps Prime. Free Maps Prime access. Leave a comment in the first 24 hours that we drop this episode. Subscribe to this channel. Turn on notifications. And if we pick your comment, we'll notify you. And then you'll get free access to Maps Prime. Cool, right? Also, Maps Performance and Maps Suspension are both 50% off right now. Go check them out at mapsfitnessproducts.com. Just use the code SEPTEMBER50 for that discount. All right, here comes the show. You know what the best time of a bulk is? Like the best period of bulking is? The best period of bulking? Yeah, like- The like, very beginning? Yeah, always. Totally. Yeah, of course. Like as soon as you start- you you don't get fatter. You just get bigger and stronger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then after a little while, Ooh, it starts fuel to... my workouts. Yes, yeah, dude. I'm a so beast. that's what I'm doing. I'm I'm trying. I'm pushing cal. And I always mess up when I try to push calories because uh, if I push too hard, it starts to mess up my gut health and then forget it. Right. But lately, it's been feeling really good. So I'm pushing calories. That's why you guys are seeing me eat more and all that stuff. And I'm in the first like week of it, and I'm just feeling like better pumps and stronger. Same leanness. I'm. Let's see what happens after a few weeks. That's when I start. So to, you're the you're the big intuitive guy. So are you tracking or no? Oh no, I don't. I'm not. I'm just eating more. <laughs> <laughs> I had ice cream last night. That sounds like my jam, right there. No, you know, yeah. no, I don't. I'm not tracking because um, honestly, it takes a lot of time and effort right now, and I'm not so like tied to bulking that like I'm okay with like after a couple of weeks, you know, reversing out of it. If yeah. I was like really like serious about it like mm -hmm. I, I want to gain x amount of pounds of lean body mass or i had a specific goal then i, I probably did you see that we had questions on the forum about when we talked about uh the the bulking like four i said at four weeks four weeks on the bulk one week off i don't know what happened oh you didn't see that no. yeah people were just asking like an example and so i gave somebody like a a generic answer right because obviously i don't know what your caloric? I said, if, pretend your caloric maintenance is twenty five hundred calories yeah. for four weeks. What I would do is eat at three thousand calories a day, and then at the end of that three weeks, for one week, I would drop you down two or three hundred calories a day. So from your maintenance, so I'd drop you down at twenty two to twenty three hundred calories for one week, so that you live you'd live in a deficit. And then when you go back to your bulk, hopefully you can get up to like thirty two hundred calories. So each time you go back to the bulk from the cut hopefully being able to reintroduce a little bit more calories and just kind of playing with okay, that. Okay, so, so um, you know, now that we're talking about this, I, I have, I'm not tracking, but here's what I've added to what I normally eat because I generally eat the same stuff most days or the same types of stuff most days. Just creature habits, really easy, right? So my, my normal post-workout shake, so after I work out in the morning, I tend to, I, I'll, I'll have a, a shake that I make, which usually consists of about eight egg yolks, in water, and then I'll have like some fish oil with that and stuff like that. Now what I've done is I've added- mm, delicious. I've added uh, one and a half scoops of Organifi protein powder. Okay. So that's mm. extra. So you're going one and a half scoops of Organifi- So it's about 30 grams egg, of protein. How many eggs? Yeah, from just that. Right, just that. So it's an additional 30 grams of protein that yeah. I, I normally don't eat. Maybe a little more than that actually. Maybe a little more. Yeah. I'm also, normally my post-workout shake is just the egg yolks and that's it, but I've done that. Plus you've seen me now add three rice cakes to that. That sounds so weak, right? Rice cakes. I have three <laughs> rice cakes. Three rice cakes. But that's like 60 grams of carbs, Yeah. right? And then after dinner, I will have- a small snack, which usually probably is around another 300 calories. So I'm probably over bulking. Six or 700 calories. Yeah, probably. probably. I don't know. I mean, you got a good amount of lean body mass right now on you. I don't. Thank you. I feel like. <laughs> <laughs> you don't tell me that enough, Adam. <laughs> yeah, it's, 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 Listen, this is what we always Really what about. he was doing there, right? Fishing yeah. for a compliment. I got it. You got that on yeah, camera, yeah, everybody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, good, it happened. Good about a lean body mass. Yeah, I, I feel like, um, uh, personally for myself, uh, I feel like I have to eat in more of a surplus to gain and I don't have to do that dramatic of a cut to lean out. Oh, same thing. And I don't know if that's, I mean, that might be our genetics. Yes. That, that play, I'm sure that the, there's somebody listening that the opposite is true. They probably go, oh my God, I barely add any calories and I gain weight, <laughs> and, but I got to cut like Yeah, crazy. I'm like you, same thing. Yeah, if so. I drop my calories, like if I'm at maintenance and I'm maintaining and I'll, I'll, this is what I'll do, I'll be like, okay, I'm not going to have as much rice for dinner. Oh, that's a good, like that. I'm glad yeah. you just brought that up because we should address this for the, the YouTube fools. 
There was always a couple people in there that yeah, want to come on. No, did you see? I I thought maybe I saw you comment. I know I commented on it. There there was maybe two or three people on one of the last ones that, you know, uh, the one where we did uh, We're gaining, about white rice. No, 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 about gaining muscle without putting any body fat on. Oh, God. And they were trying to say that... Uh, it's totally possible. Right. And Go I said, listen to Greg Doucette. Blah, right. Blah, blah. So, I, yeah, I, I love oh, on a maintenance. That too. Yeah, that's He has a arguing. kinesiology degree. I love that one. Yeah. <laughs> so. Okay, okay, here's the deal. <laughs> Is it possible to gain muscle and lose fat at the same time? Yes. Just like it's possible for me to dig a pool with a spoon. I yes. still, is it likely? No. It's very unlikely. Everything that we communicate on the podcast is based off of Well, we made that clear too, right? Yeah. We've given examples of where it, it is actually very normal and not hard. If you, If I get a client who's either never trained or hasn't trained in years. You always see that. Yeah. yeah. And they're and they want to lose, you know, fifty pounds of of body fat or more. Um, I can put them on a calorie deficit mm -hmm. and cut and they will build muscle. Yeah. But that there's a, a lot more going window. on. So it depends on who I'm talking to on how I address it. When we're giving general advice, mm -hmm. especially to an audience that listens to a fitness podcast, I'm going to assume most of you either already work out or are pretty damn interested in it or have in the past or recently worked out. So the advice to that person is, you know, you're going to be far better off moving your calories in a surplus if you're trying to bulk and in a deficit. It doesn't mean that you can't be in this maintenance and do kind of both. Yeah. I, I think, and I also think that takes a lot of a discipline on many levels of your discipline on how you eat and train, but even like the mental discipline of not letting the scale and the mirror mess with your head, which when I think of the average person that I train, that that's a challenge for most people. More than a challenge. It's yeah. a very, very challenging. Oh, so speaking of which, I've brought this up on the podcast before. You guys remember when I've talked about the Colorado experiment with yeah. Arthur Jones? And so, um, did you post in the forum? I posted in the forum about it. that and talking about building muscle and burning body fat. This is a documented example of absurdity. And when I say absurdity, I don't mean that it's this is didn't happen. Casey it's, Vider is that Casey Vider yeah. was the guy that was in what there was actually more than him. There were, there were actually several people in the study, but Casey Vider is the one that they highlight because he's uh, he was a pro bodybuilder. He's the youngest person ever to win Mr. America, which at the time that was a big bodybuilding contest. Uh, widely believed to be one of the most gifted bodybuilders of all time in terms of just being able to build muscle, right? And this study, till this day, is one of the most hotly contested studies of all time. It was done at a university. There were witnesses and pictures, but the results... As, as, if you look this up, if you read the results, you think this is absolutely now, impossible. Now, I didn't, I didn't reread that study. We've talked about it many times, and, and I'm, I'm less familiar than you are, and I don't have this incredible photographic memory like you. Uh, is do, do they take into consideration that he's probably taking anabolics, or is there proof that he did or didn't too? Because a, that a, plays a huge role in that. It does. According to the study, he did not take any anabolics. Now, back in those days... Uh, anabolic steroid use among bodybuilders was very low and it was seasonal at most. Nobody was on them year round. So is it believable that he didn't take steroids? Yes. Does it matter? Not when I read you these statistics. When I tell you the statistics, I don't give a shit what you take. It sounds absolutely insane. Here's the factor that I think plays the biggest role. In going into the study, he was already a big ass bodybuilder. I think I can do this, by the way. I believe what the position I'm in right now. Now, I, I know I'm going to get a bunch of people that are going to want me to do this and I don't feel like doing this. But I believe that, and I know where you're going with this. I was at, you know, 240, 250. I had 210 pounds of lean body mass. I'm probably like 170, 180 lean. So I've got a 30 to 50 pounds of muscle my body was used to having on it just a few years ago. So if I really scaled my volume, increased my calories, I bet you I can make a pretty aggressive. And now, mind you, I'm on HRT too, so... I have that and, advantage. And although you are, you definitely have some some genetic gifts, right? Casey Viator is on a whole nother level. I mean, this yeah. guy was like 18 years old. You should see what he looked like. It's yeah. just insane. And I know there's going to get, I'm going to get a bunch of trolls that are going to go, oh my God, and, and talk shit. Well, or check but out my the, point is not that necessarily I, I could outdo that, but I could show such dramatic. I, when I first did my transformation, I got called out on yeah, that. Yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. of people thought it was fake. And I'm yeah. like, thought I was doctoring the photos and doing the, no, it's just that I know no, when you I, know your body yeah. muscle memory. And, and I think muscle memory plays the biggest role in this. So here's, let me read the stats first. And then I'll tell you something else about the study. Well, first off the study was conducted by Arthur Jones. Arthur Jones is the inventor of Nautilus equipment. 
And what he was trying to do is highlight the effectiveness of Nautilus equipment and also his method of training, which included very low volume, but extremely high intensity. So rather than doing 15 sets for legs, you do like three, but it was like maxed out, you know, to failure, four straps. You did sets where there were just negatives and partial, like, like you really pushed intensity through the roof, but the volume was also super low. Now check out what Casey Viator did in the first week. The first, and this is again, this is documented by like scientists and there's pictures, still hotly contested though. The first week he gained 27 pounds of muscle. What, seven days? That's one, one. Yeah, that's ridiculous. Week. 27 he, pounds of lean he body mass? He, wow. Yes. He lost seven pounds of body fat also during that period of time. Over 28 days, he gained 63 pounds yeah. of lean body yeah, mass. Yeah, I don't think I could do that. Which, <laughs> oh my God. Think, but you after, get my point though, yes, right? Yeah. That's his before and after. This is 28 days later. Look wow. at that. Uh, he, so essentially he gained two, two and a quarter pounds of muscle per day on average. Now here's something that is important he to He wasn't know. on anabolics. Well, know, here's bro. what's Come important. On, I, I totally How naive you. are people? He's got a D-ball look right there, right? Yeah. Now Not, here, yeah. now hold on a second. Okay, hold on a second. Let's back up for a second. Here's This is something that they did admit. Casey Viator went into this as a pro bodybuilder, had an accident, uh, went to the hospital. I don't remember what the accident was, something with electrical accident or something like that. Went to the hospital. They gave him an injection of antibiotics. He had a severe reaction to it. Lost... Tons of muscle. So the before picture is a pro bodybuilder right after he recovered from a terrible accident, completely atrophied. So he's got all the muscle memory. Tremendous wait, wait muscle memory, incredible genetics. He's and recent too, which I think makes a difference too. Yeah. Like, yes. It wasn't and, like a long time And ago. he trained in a new way. It was a new stimulus. It was all this other stuff. And maybe he did anabolics. Still 60 pounds Yeah, that, no matter how you draw that up, that is... Because uh, here's the thing too. I, don't, I, I actually don't think uh, anabolics plays the biggest role here. Oh, muscle memory. And, and, my, and including yes, with yes, my argument, of, yes, I know I'm on HRT, and so of course I'd have an advantage. That's not what would make the greatest change. Yes, that would assist me. Yes, that would help. Yes, if he was or was not on that, that plays a role. But the biggest factor was that he had built that much lean mass on his body mm -hmm. for so long, and he had just recently lost What did his physique it. look like going uh, before he got his accident? Oh, was was it pro close builder. to this? Well, he was a pro I mean. bodybuilder. Okay. Was yeah. it was it better than what he looks like here? Yeah. Oh, God. If he's a pro bodybuilder, yeah. there's no way you go pro. With yeah, he was, so he was it, leaner and even more muscle. But check this out. I mean, so all that matters. Check this out, though. They had other people in the study. So another guy uh, built 18 pounds of muscle in 11 days. Another guy built 18 pounds of muscle in 10 weeks. 15 pounds of muscle in six weeks. 18 pounds of muscle in four weeks. Like crazy results across the board. And so it's really wild. Now here's the deal. I've tried the workouts like this. Cause I read this study. Remember this study was done in, I think it was 1980 or something like that in early seventies. I remember reading this as a kid cause Mike Menser's book, heavy duty was based on the principles of Arthur Jones. Duty. I've trained like this does not work. It did, did not work for me this way. I've trained clients like this. I know I'm, I'm terrible to admit. I actually put clients on this kind of training program. <laughs> I it was, never worked for clients this way. I don't know how, and this study has never been duplicated. But I love to, I love bringing it up because it's like this crazy, it's like a phenomenon, hotly contested yeah. study. How long ago was it when T Nation? I see this jugs at a T Nation article. This is one article. I think it was 2016, but they've done other articles. on What it. was their point in this article? Do they were remember? just showing like uh, it was it was it was documented. There were scientists there. It was at a university. I know, so. but what's the art? Okay, the Colorado experiment. Oh, he's just they're just saying is it fact, fact or fiction? Now the, the author of that article, I think that was in what was that 2018? 16. Uh, 16. Ellington. Dar Arden is a bodybuilder, ex-bodybuilder, PhD, who was super pro this style of training. So he's like, he was like Mike Menser. So he really promoted this like super low volume, super high intense form of training. Hmm. Now, again, I, I mean, I've done this. I've done it with other people. It just doesn't work. Uh, yeah. I've seen, people. I mean, I'm not that crazy because there was, when uh, I was doing this, I was actually doing the uh, bioimpedance thing and I was doing the dunk tank on a pretty regular basis. So I was constantly tracking and I had some pretty crazy swings, nothing like 63 pounds, yeah. but I mean like 15 pounds in like two weeks, like yeah. of, of lean body mass. Like I've seen e easily. Wow, swings. that's crazy. Yeah. I've seen swings like yeah. that on, on my, and I actually have it. I'm sure it can go to Aaron with the dunk tank. Cause they, they keep it. It's all tracked. We could probably find it. Probably that would some, be really cool. Yeah. I'll look, I'll look at, look, see if I have some of them laying around still. Yeah. But I mean, I, I don't think it's that, uh, that surprising or amazing though. When you've built, 
the this physique and totally atrophy yeah, yeah and totally atrophied like i mean it is in my diet my training everything is way the blueprint still there yeah 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 the muscles i mean will respond. well think about it this way to give you an example if whoever's watching this right now if you're like super experienced with training put your right leg in a cast for uh 60 days if you want to do this i don't recommend you do this by the way but if you, you, you know you could try this if you want your right leg in a cast for 60 days take the cast off it will be severely atrophied then start training it and document how fast it gets back to normal, it will blow you away. Oh, yeah. yeah. So I, I, it's kind of a good conversation we're having right now because I actually do – I don't get them as often as I used to. Um, when we first started kind of growing, one of the most popular things – and I know these go viral for YouTubers uh, – the whole, you know – showing somebody's i mean there's a guy more plates more dates like his mm. whole business is built around like looking at other people and and decide helping people decide is it fake is it real is he natural oh, is he not oh, natural that's what he does i've heard oh yeah people well, know, he does lots of stuff he does lots okay. of stuff he's a smart guy um but i mean it, it, that that is something that people want to know i used to get dms all the time of they'd send me this guy Maddie or not brah and yeah. it'd be a, a a picture of someone that made this crazy swing like look how shredded it. there's no way this is true right yeah. it's only 12 yeah. weeks i'm like 12 weeks I mean, I, I prep for shows in, in eight weeks, nine weeks. Mm -hmm. If you saw what I look like going into prep and the end of prep, like stage ready is dramatically different. And so it's not that unbelievable that you see these transformations, especially when you're doing it with the intent to show that. So, of course, you're going to uh, puff up a little bit. I'm going to load some sodium and water the right. day before. I'm going to look kind of whatever slouched over. And then the other one, I'm going to be totally dried to bone. I'm going to be uh, uh, tanned up like get crazy. I'm going to get a pump. I'm going to pose. I will show you. And the and the bigger the physique or the person, the more dramatic you can show. Yeah. I'm mean, a six foot three, oh, 200 something pound guy. There's a lot of videos guy. of that, of how to doctor that, like completely yeah. going into like a before and after and how they've actually, you know, done that for a lot of In the programs. same day. In the same day. They'll do the same day. Yeah. I'll tell you something right now. It's pretty uh, crazy. I've done, I, I've done it. If you go back far enough on my Instagram, you've done that? I'd show people like nine pound swings in a, in 24 hours crazy and show how different my body looks and the only difference is a bunch of water yeah. food and a an, posture and, and, and a pump and yeah. one to be in the morning one in the morning flat no calories no water one the next day yeah. pumped up water food good lighting yeah, yeah all that yeah. stuff makes a huge difference oh, i'll tell you what man when i get a pump i look like a different human completely like a different human it's not yeah. i mean if you've ever seen me with a picture of my shirt off on instagram Here's a, Which gonna, we have. Yeah, I'm, I'm always gonna, trying I'm to tell reveal this to you. I'm always trying really to tell. Pump. I'm yeah. always trying to tell the YouTubers that yeah, this guy works out right before here. He's like half the size in real no, life. No, hold on a second. <laughs> hold on a second. It doesn't last that long. Uh, hey, hey. If that was true, you'd he's see just me call shrink. himself yeah. out, right? Now. You'd see me shrink as the podcast. <laughs> Every little. time you're talking, he's just <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, between sets. Yeah. 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 You guys don't see him. He has a set yeah. of dumbbells right here on the side of his chairs. And every time Justin and I talk, he's over here doing curls. Every time Andrew switches the camera to one of the other guys, that's the only time I let them talk. I need a better pump. He jumps down. Your opinion, Justin. Push -ups. Yeah. Real quick, give us 30 seconds of an opinion. Yeah. Oh. You better do it quick because I'm I'm only good for like short bursts. <laughs> hey, hey, so here's something else that's really cool. So you guys know that yeah, I get really... change the subject for sure. Yeah, I know. You guys <laughs> <laughs> quick. <laughs> quick. Ah! You guys know that I'll 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 pick I'll get a subject and I'll just go stupid on it and dig real deep. And I've been on this kind of like aspirin kick. Like because I, I read <laughs> well, that's a weird thing to be on. Well, no, because you remember I brought up all the those baby aspirin. Oh, yeah. 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 And I was so, so protected. I was so fascinated yeah. by it that and aspirin's been around for so long. There's so much stuff you could read about it. It's really fascinating. So I'm reading. Did you guys know that there was a study that showed that daily baby aspirin was as effective as erectile dysfunction drugs for helping men achieve erections? Is it just, is it just the blood Wait, thing? Yes. That's it, huh? Yes. Just improves blood flow. Improve the blood flow. Now, this wow. wasn't like a an acute thing like I take Viagra and I feel it you know I, oh, I it just work. happened over a long period yeah like if you take it yeah. every single day a little bit uh, men reported significantly improved erections from aspirin and they said comparing it to these erectile dysfunction drugs it's about as effective now, really just marketed that way oh my know? god yeah but the problem is the aspirin's roof. not patented now so. do does do I do uh, Viagra and all the other brands do they have aspirin in it no they don't no no okay now that's a vasodilator now, yes yeah. so that open so uh aspirin is an anticoagulant thins the blood so it through that process increases blood flow viagra and other medications in that class are called pde5 inhibitors and what they do i feel like doug's are you taking notes over there right now doug no. <laughs> <laughs> no. Like, mm. i don't need i've never seen else? him take no else? i've never hey. seen him take notes during hey. the podcast before hey his his notes right now say 
<laughs> take aspirin. <laughs> ask doctor for Viagra. Yeah. Uh, no, uh, PDE5 inhibitors inhibit an enzyme that breaks down what's called nitric oxide. So when you inhibit that, you get more nitric oxide. The cap capillaries open and dilate and you get increased blood flow. So different, completely different mechanisms. So because I was reading about aspirin and it, it, oh, it compared it to Viagra for erections, then I went and read, read about Viagra and PDE5 inhibitors. And I said, you know, these have been around for a little while now. They've been widely used. I wonder if there's other effects or potential I, benefits. Don't you remember seeing, I mean, I saw this in the 90s a lot, in at least the gym that I grew up in, kind of an old garage bodybuilder type of gym. There would be, uh, I'd see Viagra pills all the time. Man, what mm. kind of locker room were so, you in? So the- <laughs> Had a lot of fun in there. No, but and, I mean, I, I remember oh, being told that sure. like it, it it works kind of like no explode does with uh, the pumps. Like people swear by using. I've never tried it before. Um, I would be open to doing it. I just don't. I I feel like it. I never felt like it. Viagra played that big of a difference for me. I never really. And I've played with it before. I've tried it and mm -hmm. used it. And I don't think it's like like a game changer. I think it really makes a difference for someone who really has erectile dysfunction. Well, I don't know. I'm sure they know it's a huge difference. Well, I don't know, but what, what I, you're right. People have used it for performance yeah. and it has, has been shown in studies, at least in some aspects <clears throat> to improve athletic performance, in particular altitude. So when the athletes take it at altitude, oh, interesting. they notice improved performance, hmm. especially for endurance type athletes. Now, would that get you popped on like uh, Olympics if you were taking Ooh, Viagra? Good question. I think Is it controlled? It's That's probably really on good. the list, I yeah. would imagine. <laughs> You don't want to take it in some sports, though. You don't, <laughs> yeah, I'm, let me take it before my wrestling match. Yeah. Uh-oh. Uh, oh, my God. So like, you know, that reminds me. I'm watching, uh, you know what show is came back? I, I guess I, I'm going to finish the loop, by the way. Oh, I got sorry. Some stuff go ahead. Go finish your loop, and then I'll tell you this, okay. this sex education okay, so, story. Okay, so, so, yes, it's been shown to improve performance. Here's the other stuff it does. Reduces heart attack risk, mm -hmm. strokes, improves uh, blood vessel health. In fact, they're speculating that PDE5 inhibitor drugs, like Viagra, in the future, may be prescribed as health, like health drugs. Like just take this low dose on a regular basis because it's good for your heart. It reduces strokes. Sweet. It does all this incredible stuff. Right? Yeah. yeah. Weird. All right. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Like no, I was no. I I was interrupting you. You know how pissed off everybody gets when I interrupt Sal when he's talking about. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> just let him finish. You've been listening yeah. to them too much. Yeah, dude. I do. Right. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Viagra's not banned by the long. Olympics. Good. Yeah, there you oh, go. it's not. Huh? Good news, everybody. Good I, news. I wonder how many of them actually use it. Then I bet it's used. If it's not banned, oh, I'm well, sure. I'm sure it's. That's used why like crazy. they had to make those beds super small. Yeah. Remember that? No. This all this boner talk has got me thinking about the show that I watched last night. So I watched um, that show that's, um, I forget where it's based out of. It's uh, um, it's called Sex Education. I love it. It's, it's on so UK. Yeah. So it's on, yeah, UK. So it's the second season and I mm. haven't watched the second season. Yeah, the third one oh, comes yeah. out Friday. I didn't know that. Yeah. And I, for some reason, it got buried in my queue or whatever like that. So Katrina and I were uh, watching it last night and uh, episode one, spoiler alert, is like, it's, uh, you know, he j the season one ends with him like, figuring out masturbation like he hadn't figured out masturbation yet and that's mm -hmm. how like season one ends so season two opens with masturbation like right away like that's yeah. how it opens up the scene one of the greatest discoveries and yeah. in the the His first like three the to five minute clips it's 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 like this uh i don't know what you call it, where it's like fat fast cut you know back and forth of him like all the times he's masturbating throughout the day like running home to yeah, get to yeah. the bathroom and having to like be jogging on the track see girls butts and then run go off in the tree and he's doing it and katrina's asking me she's like is it really like that crazy? I'm like, you know, this is obviously for, you know, Hollywood reasons. Yeah, it's, and it's, it's comical. It's exaggerated a little bit. I said I never, you know, took a a, a right turn off into the forest to jerk off you because didn't? I saw I never did <laughs> I, say, uh, I didn't do that, yourself. but I do. <laughs> hey, I do vividly remember during the those that that first, you know, year of finding this out like running home from school. Like oh. I do remember that. I remember being in school and then like <laughs> running to get home so I could get the bathroom to myself. Like I do remember that. It's okay. Uh -huh. Women don't, and I, I've told this to my, I've explained this to my wife and I've talked to be like, and some women might get this. I, I, this isn't all men. This isn't all women, but generally speaking, when you're a, a, a boy, you go from having the testosterone of a child to having the highest levels of testosterone you'll ever have, you'll ever have at once, and it happens all at once, yeah. and it's overwhelmingly yeah. powerful over your behaviors. And yes, if it you don't takes know how to, over your thought process, you just don't know how to manage it. And you're, I mean, yeah, it's like you discover this thing that's super awesome, and you could do it frequently because you're, you know. So do you guys remember that? Yeah. I mean, do you yes. remember? Do you remember? Do you remember like that first? I remember the first month. Like I can remember the first month of like figuring that. out. I remember out. the first. 
30 years after I discovered that. <laughs> <laughs> What's today's date? Well, I just remember you used to be in class and, and it's something really boring. You know, the teacher. Yeah, and you still get a hard on. Then you get that feeling. Yeah. Like, dee, 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 dee. <laughs> this mighty sense. Like, what? That's what she, she asked me about that. And I said, that's very accurate. I yeah. said, you just, it, it's at that age, it's so uncontrollable. Just thinking about it. Yeah, yeah. Think, or even your genes rubbing the wrong way oh on it God. is yeah. enough to, to give you that that feeling about that. Oh. But the scene, there's a scene then where he is, uh, and the, I told her too, that this happens for sure. Like there's this uh, not very attractive woman, but she has massive boobs and you can see her nipples through the shirt. Oh, and that matter. doesn't, that's all he needs. Well, and yeah, then he gets excited inside the front yeah. seat and his mom's in the grocery store and he starts jerking off in the front seat and she comes <laughs> back because she forgot like something, Dude. she forgot her wall or something. And it's right when he's orgasming and it shoots on the wall. Oh. Oh. On the window as his mom. It's like the wow. most, I die. That's how the oh. episode one opens with that, dude. I'm like rolling. Oh, oh my yeah. God. I would never, were, that would be mortifying. Dude. I remember, I have a specific memory that was just, it's, this is rough because you're right. You'll get an erection even if you think about it. In other words, if you think, please don't get an erection, now you're going to get one, right? Yeah. So it just happens. And I remember it, in the summer, I would go to work with my dad. He'd wake him up at fucking 5 a.m., Let's go. So, all right. And I got to go to work with him. And I'm in his work van and I'm half asleep and we're driving and I'm with my dad. There's yeah. no one else in the fucking uh, car. Yeah. And then I start to get a boner. And then you like feel you're like your dad, my dad's here. Yeah. Oh, what the fuck? What's wrong with me? Oh my yeah. God. And the more you think about it, the worse it gets. Like, oh, I remember yeah. that. Yeah. It was terrible. Oh, it's so awkward. Well, ju Justin's Jazzercise. the one that got caught with Wait, the- Wait, hold on. Just, just, <laughs> Jazzercise? What? Yeah, what? dude. <laughs> well, because my what? mom would take me everywhere, you know? Because like, it was like, and so I'm sitting in there, like it was like a roller rink, you know, where they would do their Jazzercise. No! And I'm just sitting there, you know, kind of waiting, bored, and just- for some reason, you know, there's just there's women in like those '80s leotard things, and <laughs> things moving and jumping and bouncing around, and it just was like, oh, and and inevitably, I'm just sitting there, <laughs> this huge direction. I'm trying to like, you know, face the other direction. I'm trying to like cross my leg. I didn't know what to do with it. Like, dude, it was awkward. It was bad. Dude. That's the funny part that I told her uh, was accurate. That I think is very different as a, a grown older man today versus when I was a kid. Was that I mean, to get that, you you have to really be in the you're in the moment in your head and think about things. And you're just well, wiser. It's not as novel, yeah, right? And of course, right. But back then, like it was, it it could be so. It could be a thing. Like you could be like the way fruit is laying in a bowl. You know, oh what I'm saying? it could be it could yeah. be weird stuff like that, and it gets the brain going. And then <laughs> it's at 17, dude. Nothing stopping that thing. No, it's <laughs> yeah. It's a it's terrible. People don't understand. It's such a great show. If you guys haven't seen it, I think it's a it's a it's a wildly accurate. Accurate and funny, and it's a really good. Have you, are you up to date on it? I know you yeah. watched it too before. Uh, yeah, I've, I watched that a while ago. I'm trying to remember like what you're talking about, but yeah, it's, it's coming back as is you know the beginning. Yeah, I didn't. So I watched all of season one, loved it, and then yeah. I guess I don't know where what was going on with my TV at season God, two. That do I you guys remember it. the first time a girl touched it? Yeah. Do you remember the first time? Like a, oh, I mean, not on it. I mean, like over your pants. I know. Like, do you D remember that? Doug's gonna hate we're going in this direction, but I do have this. This funny, is important stuff. To I talk remember. About. In, I mean, in if there's four, a kid watching right now, he, this is a good. These are I mean, pivotal moments. Nobody talked to me about this timeline. shit when I was a kid. I remember in fourth grade that have that was my first girlfriend, and we went to how funny is this? We went and watched uh, Oliver and Company, a Disney movie cartoon, and she sat next to me. Our parents were all the way in the back. We went and sat in the front. And she, we're in fourth grade, and I remember uh, she touched my thigh, and I remember getting the the most massive erection and wow. sweating. Fourth and, grade, Jesus yeah. Christ! I didn't do anything with it. Like I was scared yeah. to death at that point. You were, you were a little kid. Yeah, I didn't even know what to do with it. Right at that point, you're you're still. I, so at this point, I still haven't I haven't found masturbation yet. But I remember the uh, how embarrassed and nervous and scared sure. I felt like See, I remember, covering the popcorn. You know, over the over the. Over <laughs> <laughs> oh, I re I remember. For me, it was. And then you cut the. It hole. was yeah, seventh or eighth grade. I think it was seventh. So this is like when the shit starts to hit. The, like this is when you're feeling everything yeah. right seventh eighth grade and i had a girlfriend i was eighth grade and i had a girlfriend and she was way more advanced than i was and aggressive and we were making out which already i'm already excited as hell and she reached down and through my pants she grabbed it and it was like i don't know man bah. heaven's gates <laughs> yeah. oh, you know and you bolts. go home you're like yeah. what just happened yeah yeah. Now, do you think there's there's things today as an adult that you guys can draw back uh, to to moments like that that were so impressionable that because of that like ascent, 
get you in the mood or a certain thing. Well, don't they call that, that imprinting? Is, yeah, yeah. imprint. Yeah, for there, sure. Yeah, it was, there was a story. I don't remember what book it was like in. Like, I have smells and scenarios and things like that that just, like, it's like. Oh, no, they, there's a, that's documented. Herbal essence, dude. <laughs> that, <that's>, <laughs> bro, 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 that shit got me. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's commercials. Yeah. No, it wasn't even just the commercials. It's the smell that, of the I conditioner. Get turned on. Ever since then, I got turned on the commercials because, like, uh, you know, my You got a shower thing going on, right? That'd Total be shower thing. Like, I became a shower <laughs> Big guy. Big shower guy. And I guess now I'm pinning it back to that commercial. Yeah. Because, dude, so she had like the perfect, like straight blonde hair, and it just smelled like the uh, whatever kind of botanical <laughs> scent that was. Dude. Cotton candy. It just like, oh, like even if I was walking down the hall, uh, it would just, it would get me. I would almost be paralyzed. Well, to this day, uh, because of a lot of my first. Uh, sexual experiences as a kid uh, happened um, and I had a girlfriend who was wearing a uh, vanilla Victoria's Secret lotion. So that right there. So yeah. there you go. That lotion is like the lotion. All my candles are vanilla. Like I, that is forever imprinted in me that that smell. I love that smell. And I know it's because of that. Right. So, I know that a lot of my first were with this girl when I was a kid and she wore that type of Victoria's Secret. There, so there was a so this is documented. I forgot what book it was in, but this they talk about this situation where this kid was masturbating and at the moment of orgasm, a spider was crawling either on his <laughs> arm or his leg. Oh, wow. And because of that, it, what happens, it's, it's, you, you get imprinted on sometimes. Yeah. Because of that, it became a fetish yeah. to where he would like so, bugs crawling on him when he would masturbate. And it became, and it, they use wow. that as example because it's so strange. He's in the bathroom reading Charlotte's Web. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I have, so we're, we're playing Good tell pig. all here now, right? <laughs> When I was a kid, pig. the first pig. the first time a girl ever touched me down there, I was deathly sick. She came over to check on me and bring me over like soup. It brought you back that. to life. And so he's not breathing. <laughs> so to this day, I could be sicker than a dog, and I'm like sexually aroused the entire time. It's wow. the funniest thing wow. ever. That to your spider point, right? That like who is, doesn't want to be resuscitated that way? You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's way better. Yeah, hey, <laughs> yeah. I brought him back to life. He taught me CPR. Wow, that's great, honey. I yeah. just wait. Yeah. That's not I mean, CPR. usually you go mouth, but I yeah. know we're going way off, and Doug's probably Sorry, cringing Doug. over there. But, but you I, can't edit this whole thing out. I mean, yeah, honestly, though, it's like it's. I find it very fascinating that we that something like that can happen that. The, I mean, when you're 15 years old or whatever, and it's this is why shaped yeah. like so. This is why you guys know the old. It's still kind of a fetish thing, like the whole BDSM thing, where people you know submit or dominate, or whatever. But you know the classic like spank me, mm -hmm. and that was a thing for a while. Where and it was instead like a joke or whatever. And some people were still turned on by this, but it was like a big thing where people got turned on by getting paddled in the butt. You know what they connected that to? Uh, adolescent authoritarian adolescent boys what? going through puberty, going to schools where that's the punishment. Uh, so you're in seventh or eighth grade, and the nun, come here, you you fucked up again, getting paddled in the butt, yeah. and because you're in that state of mind or whatever, and you get an erection, now you get imprinted, and you like getting paddled in the wow. butt. Yeah, I read about that. And is because of that, is there a do you know? Because obviously, paddling in school is dramatically yes. decreased. So is that? I actually read an article that said no that, way that 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 that, that, that it was around that time where it became. Much? It became like a big thing. Yeah. And till this day, people are still, but that specifically they said is, you know, oh, and I that's could, interesting. And I could, I tell you what. So has that, I mean, do you, did that article so say that? Furry ears to me. Did it? Furries? I furries. guarantee someone had, was on a, a you had, I mean, when you were a kid, you had a, a big old thing of stuffed animals, oh, right? Oh, that's what it is. Imagine yes. being a kid and you were, you know, got stuffed animals all around you and that's bears. when you had some yeah. weird I thing mean, like that. I mean, okay, let me that tell makes you. sense. I mean, I don't know. I might have done it when I was I mean, completely speculating <laughs> right now, but. <laughs> so like, that, so did, did the article say that that, that has de uh, de uh, declined? They didn't say that, uh, but they did connect it to that. And of course, it's pure. Why don't I you mean, Google that, Doug? You got pure. something to Google over there. I'm going to take us out of this. He's on a watch list right now. All right, I'm going to I'm going to take. I'm going oh, yeah. to take a turn here. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to okay. take a turn here. I want to, I'm excited to, I don't listen to a lot of podcasts. Um, we just, we're so busy and I have kids and all that stuff. But every once in a while, I'll, I'll tune in to certain podcasts. I love uh, Order of Man, Ryan Mitchler, right? Great interviewer. Yes. I was just going to say that. Yeah. He's one of the few people. So I've been on his show, I think two or three times. The way he interviews is so, he's so good at it. He takes the conversation in interesting areas. It doesn't feel choppy or like he's, he's very off a professional. List. Very, very good. Yeah. And if you listen to him interview other people, he's actually, in my opinion, becoming one of the best that I've heard. 
They have an episode coming out. He's going to interview Ben Shapiro. I was going to. He has Shapiro wow. and Crenshaw coming up right now. Yeah, I saw him yeah. post about that the other day. Oh, bro, he's getting huge guests. Yeah. So I'm excited to hear that because like he's I said, con- it's been really fun to watch him. I remember when we first met him, like yeah, uh, Tahoe. We weren't even that excited to meet him, to be honest, right? Because at that time we didn't know who he was. Really, yeah. we just knew he was going to be well, in the I'm area. Sure you didn't know who we was? We were either. Right? I agree. So, no, I, I, and I think we. That's how our relationship got built, which is always fun, right? When you meet somebody, you know, you're not really that excited to meet each other, and then you kind of like hit it off. I remember us all sitting in that room at the Tahoe house that we rented Mm -hmm. and first time meeting each other and just having this like kind of open, which you could go back and there's a, there's definitely a mind pump episode way back when probably in the three hundreds or so somewhere in that range where we all connected for the no, first he time. I think we were talking about the you know the decline of testosterone amongst males. I think that was the that's th- what the we subject. talked about. Yeah. Yeah. No, he does a really good job. And if you're like for me, if I'm interested in listening to a particular person on a podcast, let's say I'm looking up uh, like Ben Shapiro, who's who he's interviewing, right? Let's say I'm, I'm going to hear him say certain things. If I see him on Order Man, that's where I'm going because he's got the he does such a damn good job. No, he I, and I remember even back then uh, I, we all said it afterwards, like, "Whoa, that was one of the better." better people that have ever interviewed us the way he controlled and, and directed the interview. I think yep. he, he takes his job very seriously and there's, there's a reason why he is scaled to where he's at. I know, so. it's, a, it's a good yeah. story. All right, so more cool science, okay? Science. A study came out. This is an animal model. So this was a, a, a mouse study. However, it's been speculated in humans as well, but very interesting. In this mouse model, they demonstrated that a high-sodium diet had potent anti-tumor effects so they gave mice cancer they gave uh oh, some mice sounded cute till he said that uh, they gave some mice a low sodium diet moderate sodium high sodium so they split them all up the high sodium diet and they speculated that this would happen hmm. significantly reduced tumor size it killed that's cancer. interesting sodium yes because wouldn't you uh, it, wouldn't you have to increase their calorie intake in order to do that too or do they just shoot straight shoot no, Pure I think sodium. they just added it to their diet. Which is interesting because with cancer, almost everything fuels cancer. You're right. Yeah. So that's really interesting that giving giving it more actually had a, a well, suppressing so, effect on well, it. Well, high sodium has, can have an inflammatory effect. Now, when I say that, I, people hear that as bad. Uh, ex- exercise can have an, it has an inflammatory effect. What it does is it stimulates the pathways uh, that, that have to do with inflammation that also have to do with immune function. So, like for example, if I hammer your 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 inflammation way down, okay, you have no immune, you know, no inflammation now. Yeah, you're not going to be able to recover from exercise. You're not going to be able to rebuild. Cancer will probably go crazy in your body. You'll get sick very easily because you need that to fight certain things. So, through the infl- inflammatory process, this is what they said in the study. They think that's how the sodium had such a potent anti-tumor effect. So I wonder if they're going to couple that because right as of now, right, hasn't uh, the the ketogenic diet been accepted as protocol for cancer treatment now? In some in some cases, it's got anti-cancers. So in others, I, not right. so much. So, but and the ketogenic diet is is going to be relatively low on sodium unless you supplement for it or make sure you add a bunch, right? In comparison to the uh, traditional American diet, that's a really oh yeah, so, yeah probably. So I, I wonder so. if they will if, if they, they add will, that on top, right? Of that, if they'll yeah. start to recommend like a you know, ketogenic diet with, you know, high sodium paired with it wow. as a protocol for that. Wow, mm. that's very interesting. Yeah, no, that's... A, now, I, the reason why the ketogenic... By the way, the ketogenic diet for cancer is very different than the ketogenic diet for, like, workouts. It's very, it's also low protein. Yeah. So that, that's a medical keto medical diet. Grade keto. It's like 70% fat yeah. and a little... Some protein and, and no no carbs at all. And really carbs. what it is, is why it's so beneficial is it's starving the cancer cells, right? Yeah, that's the, cancer... That's the, that's the theory behind why the ketogenic diet is so beneficial. Yeah, so a lot of cancer cells... Not all we've actually identified some cancer cells that can run off of ketones but some cancer cells many cancer cells they, they they're in unable to utilize glucose for energy oh excuse me uh unable to use ketones for energy so if you starve them of glucose and don't give them a lot of protein to convert into glucose and the rest of your cells can run off of ketones the cancer cells become weakened um, and die fasting will do this by the way too fasting is mm-hmm. probably the most effective yeah. way to do it because you don't give them anything and cancer cells are way more susceptible to dying from not getting you know nutrients than healthy cells. Have you guys heard uh, about this new city that they're trying to develop yeah. somewhere here in the West Coast in like a desert area? This it's utopian city, city? Telosa, I believe it's called. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like Telusa, a trillion dollars. They're trying to get all these investors involved in basically creating the city of the future, like the most like they're calling it the woke city. Is that what they're calling it? Yeah. Yeah. Like it's it the the whole thing is 
I mean, it's, I love that idea. It, it, it looks yeah, pretty I, cool, like like utopian esque, uh, uh, in terms of like a futuristic, uh, low energy. Yeah, test it what out. A, what a, exactly. But, one of yes, my what is great about it. living in a free country like we are right now, and not in a socialist or communist you world. You buy a bunch of land. Is to do that it. Yeah. nothing stops a bunch of billionaires who think that running the country that way is a good idea? Go put it to work. Go yeah. put it to test. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. I hope they do that. If it, it's uh, it, the the bane of money, power, intelligence is the arrogance, and so these, and this is my opinion, backed by I don't know, decade, no, over a hundred years of evidence. When you when you centralize and plan things from the top down, it just doesn't work. You don't have the accuracy of <clears throat> of signals like the price markets. You don't have the ability for things to uh, allocate resources effectively. That looks cool. I mean, it looks like, what's that city? Is it Singapore? It's not Singapore. It's somewhere. Yeah, no, that's is that right. like Singapore? Yeah, Singapore looks like that. Or Dubai, yeah. you know? By the way, Singapore, seen, yeah, one of the freest like markets in the world. I think, mm. in fact, if I'm not mistaken, they're like number two on the wow, Heritage awesome. Freedom Index. Yeah, well, they're talking about having cars that can fly and all that kind of, you know. So is this a, is this like just a pie in the sky idea? Or is this really something no, they're, they're trying? They've already raised a bunch of money in that direction. So wow, yeah. Let's a city. It's like they want to make sure everybody. Okay, so what? It, what's the crux of it? Like, what is the equity? Yeah. So equality and equity mean two different things, right? Equality would be equality of outcome. So, so all then us, all these people will have vested interests in the city themselves. Is that they, what you're they saying? Just, they're just basically saying, like, look at fair, inclusive. Like, well, these those are all, are all buzz terms to get everybody to say, oh, yeah, my God, that sounds amazing. Yeah. What I really want to know, again, is the, the the true crux or foundation to this There's thing. There's going to be a lot of planning, a lot of planning from the, from the top down, a lot of central planning. Now, here's the... Here's the uh, the what plus side. Equitism is that's a word. Yeah. Equitism and inclusive. They're always making up. I feel like shit. they yeah, just, <laughs> just came up with this. Smash the now. Here's equitism the, and inclusive. Growth. Here's the part of it. Mean? Here's the part of it that equitism. I think is okay when you're planning something that from the looks, top. That dude looks woke. He does. Yeah. When you're planning something from the top, it's easier when it's small. For example, I could do that with my house. Of course, there's five people. When you do it to five hundred people, well, much harder. Five million people. So a city. They have a better chance than they would if it was a country. I still think it's going to That's like if you go life. into a place like all Amish people or go into one religion and try and move everybody. It's going to be a lot easier because everybody has the same core beliefs. You can't do that in America. That's a good yeah. point. In America, you got everybody in all different beliefs and directions. It's going to be constant pulling. But that's the beauty of of our country and the, that the ability that everybody can go in any direction they want. You try and create this tiny little- Now, is this going to become a neo-modernist cult? That's my question. Oh, well, yeah. That would yeah. be great. Well, I Wait think till the news comes this out. This is what yeah. I think that, I mean, uh, I really believe that the Googles and the Apples are building in this direction indirectly already with mm -hmm. their little cities. And I mean, we have Google getting ready to take over all down yeah. here. Yeah. You know that, right? Like yeah, they're, they're going to own like all the, all the buildings and housing and. You know, I don't mind this. There's for a two, fire sale right I don't now. Mind, so. I don't mind <laughs> yeah. this for two reasons. One, it's their money. Okay. Spend yeah, it the best do how it. they want. Two, I think you made a great point, Adam. The kind of people that will go there are pretty much handpicked. There's probably going to be a lot of homogeny when it comes to ideas and thoughts and direction. You take a bunch of educated tech driven people and you put them in a big city and they all have the same ideas. A lot of people are going to be working together. It's going to work better than if you have a bunch of people with different ideas. So I would be inter I'm interested to see what happened. My prediction based off of what I've read is it's going to either radically change based on the fact that it's going to fail according yeah. to how they want to do it, or they'll just give up altogether. I mean, I love stuff like this, and I think that, I mean, this is the answer to the big, you know, capitalism versus socialism type of debate is like, what's cool in a, a capitalist society, you can still build a socialist society, not the other way around. Though, no, right? you can't do that. So no. go for it. Go. I, I wish that every other city was ran by its own little independent, you know, socialistic ideas, and you could choose to live there, or you could choose to live out yeah. in the next city over. And where the, the buy ins a pretty steep price point, you know. I'm sure. So whatever. Like, yeah. but, <laughs> and you do, but you know what? The kind of along those lines, the state system is like that. So, I mean, kind of, kind of, right? I wish it, it was more like that. But you're it's right, not. and it used to be. States used to have much more power than the federal government, but there's enough difference between states to where here's an easy metric. Where are people moving to and where are people leaving? And then you can look at the policies <laughs> and, it, and and it'll point. It'll point in the direction. It's I, interesting to watch that, right? It is yeah. very true. <laughs> yeah. And you can look at that and see like, okay, yeah. lots of people Why leaving. Why is there exodus happening here? Yeah, lots of people leaving places like this. Uh, lots of people moving to places like this. I mean, this. you could make those some arguments though that, that has more... Uh, 
reasons for economics than it does for you of know, course like oh, know, yeah, social no. ideas and things well like no that, it's all is, of it but economics has got to be the top of course yeah, you of know course. most most people i know that are that say they're leaving california yes they might hate a lot of our politics and policies and shit like that but most of them are just like i can't afford it it's just yeah. i can have which is I can part sell, of the, which yeah. is policies yeah a lot policies part, influence part that heavily yeah, i mean part of it too is that the, the this the supply and demand there's only so many houses on the coast of california and yeah it just keeps driving there's up new developments also yeah. there's a there's a huge tax and business burden in California. Uh -huh. California is mm -hmm. the worst, one of the worst places to open a business. You're going to have one of the highest tax burdens. The regulations are insane here. So you talked about housing. Do you know how insane it is to try to build new developments in Bro, California? Bro, you, you, I mean, uh, we've been, and I can't wait so we can go back and listen to this. You've been arguing with me for the last year and a half about this bubble bop popping, and I've been telling you it ain't popping anytime soon because basic supply and demand. I mean, I I just read an article that said that we're somewhere between 1.5 and 5 million underbuilt homes. Yeah. Wow. And while, meanwhile, by the way, with the millennials now hitting the peak age for buying a home, is the largest pool of people yeah. ever to come into the housing market to want to buy. And they're more educated. Yeah. They make more money. And so they're capable yeah, they of buying. They travel as easy and go on all their trips. So you know, to this Europe. this this run that we're seeing, and then you add in the the fact that we keep printing money to help it out. And all, all oh, I think it's going to pop, but I agree with you. There's so a long here, way up. Here's the thing, though, like, and this is why I keep – because a pop to me is, a, is an, an artificially inflated thing, and when you pops, there's this big crash. I don't think this is artificially propped up. I think it's a simple supply and demand issue, and I do think it will get plateaued with a small dip. And that what that will look like is once we finally reach – enough homes that are available mm -hmm. and the, then and we're not fighting for you know 10 people yeah. fighting for one it'll start to flatten out and you'll see a tiny and you'll see a dip because everybody right now when they post their home for sale are reaching 20 30 100 grand yeah. over and then when there's enough supply that'll level it out with a slight dip and then we'll be back again well so here's this is a weird argument for me because usually when i argue a point i want to be right this is a weird one because <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I i i i'm arguing a point that i hope is wrong because you're right supply and demand drives all that but supply and demand is what's affected by policy so supply of money right printing lots of money uh ar artificial uh low supply of housing from regulation uh, demand could be uh, skewed because of market signals, or it could drop considerably if, if inflation goes through the roof and then people lose their buying power. Now the demand goes down. But this is one of those arguments that I hope you're right, dude. I really hope you're right. I hope I'm wrong. Well, the, the truth is that, I mean, if it just keeps going the way, even if I'm wrong and your bubble pop theory does happen and we lose uh, you know, 35% equity in homes, uh, we're still going to be significantly on top from where we were just two yeah, years ago. When that, I was first all the people this. that got crushed in 2008 were the people that bought, uh, that did those adjustable loans and bought towards the end of yeah. it. But if you buy your house in 2002 and you know you saw this huge jump in 2008 and crash, yeah, and you were you still okay. And you didn't pull out a hundred, two hundred thousand okay. dollars. You know, I pulled, yeah. I pulled out of my condo. I remember I pulled out sixty thousand dollars. That's part of what hurt me. You know, mm -hmm. uh, my condo at one point was worth. I bought it was at that three, to buy the quad or three. Two, no, <laughs> it was a, actually I, I actually learned about horses. tax strategy and what made me do it. It was actually it was actually a smart move from that perspective. Uh, I had bought a brand new truck at the time, which was probably a. $70,000 truck back then, and I was making monthly payments on it. Well, that interest that you pay on monthly payments for a vehicle like not, that not is tax no, write -off. not tax write-off. Yeah. But if it is, it was uh, the interest on a home loan, so I took a home equity line out, paid off the truck completely, so now the tax that's being paid on that- A lot from, of people did that. That was a massive write-off. Yeah, so that, that, was, they called that using your home like an ATM. A lot of people did that in those yeah. days. Yeah, and when you, I mean, as a kid, when I mean, I was kind of a kid, right? I was 22 years old. You're a kid at 22. Yeah, right? So I have 22 years old. Look, obviously now I, I do things completely different. I would never do that now, but it seemed logical. You got a half a million dollar house. I only have 320 uh, that I paid for it. I put, I think, 20, rough, almost 20 down on it back then. Uh, seemed okay. But I mean, nowadays you don't have anybody getting loans like that. You can't get a house right now without putting a minimum of 10 to 20% down. Yeah. So yeah. everybody's got that in it. And then they also have the equity that's been built over the last year yeah. to two years. Mm -hmm. So I just don't see a, a, a massive uh, pop. I maybe see a plateau. Well, I hope you're right. Yeah. Real quick. I hope you're enjoying the show. Head over to drink dot com forward slash mind pump. Get a free sample pack of the best 
electrolyte powder you'll find anywhere. It has the appropriate levels of sodium to give you better performance and a better pump. Again, it's drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump. All right, enjoy the rest of the show. First question is from Furtado No Insta. What is the best way to get a pump for a photo shoot for every body part of the body with body weight only? <laughs> hey, this is a great <laughs> question for Sal right here because so he's got this mastered for our questions. So <laughs> dumb. I know it looks that way, but this is flat. I don't know. How was it when you're backstage with all those guys? <laughs> Actually, you know? no, they're, they're, uh, yeah, you guys pump, uh, yeah, I want to know about this. You guys this. pump and, each and, other? And who is uh, the designated like tan paint guy? You though? Well, those, these are two different things you guys I, I just picture Adam right, in the right. back like, hey, your, your pump looks good. Your Easy guy. <laughs> Easy guy. Uh, so... Um, yeah, we did. You you have bands backstage. I mean, that's a, extremely common. And so I think the part that like someone who's getting ready for a photo shoot, the you'll air out pretty quick. But there's a couple things that I think that are, are super beneficial to to know what to do, like sodium loading, uh, hitting the the wa the water, the carbs, kind of timing all that, and then also getting the pump. I think will keep that kind of filled out look. Whereas if you do, and I and I notice things like. Uh, if I did something more slow digesting carbohydrates, I would maintain my pump longer than if I did something that was kind of fast acting. Fast acting, quicker pump right away. Like if I was about to get on stage in a few minutes, having something that was like quick sugar, even alcohol, you see some guys will take a shot or do mm. something like that uh, to, to get Are it. Are you pounding in a bunch of water too? Or is it? Uh, you, not a lot, not a bunch. Like so, just what, enough. For stage, yeah, you, you would deplete down a little bit on your water. And then right before you get on, you load a little bit. And everybody's body's going to be different, like how much you want to take in. So yeah. for me, it would be like 70 grams of carbs and a half gallon of water. Uh, about an hour before I uh, get on stage or present mm -hmm. or a photo shoot. And then literally right before the photo shoot or right before you walk on stage, you're getting a full body. I'm doing push-ups. I'm doing lateral raises. I'm doing chest flies well, with the band. Where do you hold your camera, so I'm, I'm yeah. curious on that. So <laughs> you know what, you, figure that out. You know what's funny about this is that uh, lean looks better than big in photo shoots. Sure. So, And this is important because I think – Sometimes people get concerned with like, I need to be bigger. And so they do the carbs and the sodium, end up holding water. And they just, and maybe you get a better pump, but you just don't look as good. On well, camera. I mean, who am I talking to right now? What body fat percentage are they at? So that because totally, because you're, you're, you're at the elite well, level, well, right? Well, yeah. And what will kill you, though, to your point, though, I mean, one of the hardest things about, so I never, I don't think I ever truly bought, brought my best physique to stage when I was judged. It's extremely difficult to time this pump or this perfect look when they're judging. It really is hard. And everybody's body is so different. And depending on how much muscle you have this time around and your metabolism, yeah. I mean, all this stuff matters. And what would happen is a lot of times I would be I would be so afraid of what you just said of like taking in too much that it gives me kind of bloated looking or what in the bodybuilding community we call it like overspilling, right? So having too much carbs or calories yeah. and they're being stored as fat right? And holding on to too much water that I would kind of play to your, like you said, like, I want to stay lean and uh, that will present better. But boy, it, then I, then after I would judge in the morning, I'd be like, well, I'm, that's mainly when they decide, right? So you can come into the night show a little softer, whatever you want. Then I would fuck with things. I would go eat a whole bowl of pasta and pound a half gallon of water. And then you see my photos at night. I look 10 times better than when I got judged. This would happen to me yeah. a lot. So there is a there is a, a fine line in that, but the, yeah. this, you, to your point, getting as lean as you possibly can is the best strategy for a photo shoot or getting on stage, and then um, you know loading up with a little bit of carbs and and water bef right before you go in, like an hour before you go yeah. into your shoot. Yeah, and I think the best strategy I don't know it's for me at least. Uh, I haven't done I didn't I didn't compete. I only did one real photo shoot. This is way back in the day when uh, we did Maps Anabolic. And I did better doing kind of like light band work and going from body part to body part rather than like just doing shoulders and then going to chest. Yeah. It was like, you know, push-ups, band rows, laterals, you know, band curls, yeah, close grip push-ups. And you just kind of, yeah, I went yeah, through a circuit. You, you run like a, like a, like a light circuit. That's you're, it. Again, you're just trying to get a pump. You don't, you don't want to be hot and sweaty and get too crazy, but you're just, I'm doing push-ups and, and then I get up and I do lateral raises. The key, do, you're not doing a workout. Do curls. Yeah, no, you're just pumping blood. Yeah. Just pumping blood. But what you have to understand is because you're just pumping blood in there, like it'll, 
it'll go out. <laughs> like, you know, so it doesn't, you don't hold that pump for hours. So you literally want to do that like right before the photos or right before you get yeah. on stage. But you can do things with water and carbohydrates and sodium leading up to it to help that. But that, that takes a little more practice and experience to probably nail down exactly what your body needs. And I could never give you the formula on a podcast, not knowing yeah. your body, your metabolism, all those things. Yeah, and then for compounds you can take that might help, uh, like citrulline, right? this is what you find in pre-workout supplements. That can increase blood flow. Maybe it'll help uh, with the pump. You could try uh, you know, beetroot powder. So that, that can do a little bit of that. Uh, pycnogenol, I hope I think I'm saying that right, is another compound that can increase nit nitric oxide and help with a little bit of the vascularity in the pump. But none of this matters if you're not really lean. I mean, I just want to say that because yeah. if you're, you know, you're if you're a guy and you're, you know, ten percent body fat, you're pretty lean in real life. I'm, but on camera, it's not going to make that big of a difference if you get, you know, if you do the water and the sodium. I'm talking like you got to be shredded for this to really make a difference, not just lean, but actually shredded. Well, I imagine this person who's getting ready for a photo shoot is that's the point. Sure. You know, I would think that, that that's the first, <laughs> or else, yeah, you're right. That doesn't, there's nothing you can do. Now, here's something that this is what was often communicated in the bodybuilding space. And I can see where this has got value. They always say, don't get your legs pumped. Like, don't, qu don't pump up your quads before you got on stage because it's, hard, it's harder to flex them and produce striations. Mm -hmm. Now, personally, I could totally see that. When my quads get really pumped, I could flex them. They look big, but I can't bring out the like separation. It's like too much blood and the muscle so that and that's that's a uh one of those things that's what do they call that like a okay. you know the anecdote it, it's, yeah and in, in bodybuilders communicate it all the time so next question is from hoop golf 89 does lifting reduce flexibility no nope. no nope. this is like up there with one of those bad myths that yeah just sticks around no we addressed that recently yeah actually they did they actually now the have studying athlete they have okay so first off we have to define uh flexibility when we talk about flexibility on the show, typically what we're referring to is functional flexibility. So that means your range of motion that you actually have control and strength over, not passive flexibility like my 10-month-old son. I could put him in the splits, but he's got no stability in it, very unstable. He doesn't have strength in it, right? It doesn't count if you have lots of range of motion with no strength. In fact, that's actually instability and that'll increase risk of injury. Mm -hmm. So what you're looking for is being able to move through ranges of motion, but also have strength in those ranges of motion. And full range of motion resistance training it does exactly that. Like if you do full, good controlled squats, you now have strength in that full range of motion. If you do full range of motion flies or rows or pull-ups, whatever range of motion you train in, you have strength in it and you can increase that range of motion in studies uh, now support. Well, this. I imagine that's sort of the caveat, though, is the full range of motion workout, uh, as opposed to what you might see sometimes if you're in like in a bodybuilding sort of a set uh, where we're just going half reps or we're just trying to focus on uh, muscle tension. Yep. And um, you know, and you're building certain patterns of movement uh, that your body now is prioritizing, and then trying to take. Um, you know, that, that sort of, uh, program and then apply it to something, you know, sports related, you've seen sort of a disconnect there by the way that you've trained. So the way that you train does in fact impact, uh, you know, uh, using it functionally, but that, that would happen over quite a substantial amount of time. So, uh, in terms of flexibility itself, though, if you're doing full range of motion and having strength in that range of motion, it increases, uh, that flexibility, but strength in that flexibility, which yes. is, and you got, you have to compare apples to apples too, right? Cause what you're saying is absolutely true, Justin, but here's what the problem people will compare a well-developed muscular person who trains, without full ranges of motion, right? So you're training like a bodybuilder. And then they'll compare them to like an athlete or somebody that trains in full ranges of motion and be like, look, that bodybuilder's so tight and immobile. That's, oh, that's, yeah, not, no, that's not a good comparison. That's not fair. You want to compare the bodybuilder to someone who's inactive. Do they have greater ranges of motion and greater flexibility? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is, like, like Justin said, you get really strong in a short range of motion now you can generate a lot of force in a particular range of motion. You move outside of that, and you don't have a lot of strength in that. It's that problematic other. at that point. Oh, yeah. yeah. It could create big problems. Like if you can, 
you know, if I can generate a thousand pounds of force going straight ahead, but to the side, it's, you know, a hundred pounds of force and I move forward real fast, but then all of a sudden I got to cut, you know, that, that could cause some problems. You've seen this though too. And, um, there was a movement, especially in baseball, where it's like, you didn't want to get your chest or your arms too big. Cause it felt like it would restricted the mechanics, yeah. uh, which was totally false if you unless you're yeah, look going, at mark mcguire yeah exactly <laughs> look at look bo jackson look at like these incredible like physiques that that started to emerge in how you know amazing uh their performance was it, it wasn't you know it wasn't the muscle that was bound no. you know that that wasn't the, the the factor it was just the way they were training yeah and uh to that note if your arms get bigger and your legs get better you might have to change your technique a little bit exactly like I, like i know in in yes. in jujitsu you know there's a lot of positions where you like for example chokes right rear naked choke well, if your forearms and arms are big it might be harder to get underneath someone's chin to do a choke or if you have really big massive legs a triangle choke might be a little bit more difficult, but there's ways you can do variations, stuff like that. So for athletes listening, if you do build size, make sure you practice your technique still because otherwise you're in a new body and your old technique now is hard to, to, to carry over. Next question is from Alyssa Day Book. Can you become dependent on supplements such as multivitamins or is that a myth? It depends on the supplement. Multivitamins, no. Like if you're well, if, anything that your body naturally produces on its own, and then you take it uh, through a supplement, uh, you, absolutely. Yeah, you, a lot of that stuff you get what's called a negative feedback loop, right? So, like hormones, for example, if you take a hormone, your body may stop producing that hormone. If you drink caffeine uh, or take caffeine, be because of the way caffeine affects the body, it attaches to particular receptors. Your body then starts to downregulate those receptors and turn them off. This is why when you have caffeine the first time, you feel so much of it, and then later you need more and more of a higher dose to even get that effect. But other things, not really, like if you know, like vitamin C or B vitamins or you know, vitamin D stuff like that. No, your body utilizes it or doesn't. It doesn't really. You don't become dependent on them. Fish oils and, and, and natural components like that. And I would no, either. depend. I would want to know more what he means by dependent too, right? Are we talking about like dependent because you're addicted to it, or dependent because the body now stops producing it? Like we and you need it, right? Yeah. So I, I'd want a little bit of clarification on what they mean by dependent, because to that, you know, back to the testosterone point. Like I'm taking testosterone, so absolutely my body's going to downregulate its natural. If I was already low, I'll be even lower, right? Because I'm now taking it, um, you know, exogenous. So right. for sure, um, but. It, you're not going to be a, a, a dependent as like addicted to it to where you have to take it. Yeah, but but the body does have a lot of these mechanisms. Like cholesterol is a great example. So you can eat cholesterol, uh, and what will happen is your liver will produce less to balance it out. So, and this it's a wonderful mechanism the human body has. A lot of animals don't do this, by the way. They old studies on cholesterol used rabbits. They would give them a high cholesterol diet, and the rabbits' cholesterol would go so high it would be scary. Doesn't really happen with humans, which is why they've removed cholesterol off that you know, nutrients of concern list. So a lot of compounds uh, don't do that and others do. It depends on what you're talking about. But like if something has a profound effect on you, if you take like uh, an herb, for example, like you take horny goat weed, that's a good one. And you're like, oh my God, my libido is boosted. I could feel, man, I could really feel this working. Mm -hmm. Keep taking it and you'll probably notice it has a diminishing effect. Now, all that being said, I still think that, um, I still think there's some things that we we don't fully know yet. And there's stuff that I know we can talk about that we've seen in our experience with somebody who gets most of their nutrients through whole foods versus supplementing on time just seem to do better. They do. So, and you know, there's some theories around that, but there's some things that I think that we don't still fully know why that, why that is that you just don't yeah, get some the, delivery system there. Right. There's, there's to, yeah. the, oh, for some reason, the way we were supposed to consume those nutrients is still superior than to how we figured it out through, well, through vitamins. Find show me in nature where you would find pure vitamin C with nothing else. There's nothing else. Right. No cofactors, no, no sugars, no fibers, no other compounds, right? Uh, you, there's you don't find isolated nutrients in nature. It's always comes with a lot of different things. Um, so yeah, you're you know, you take in iron from food. You'll absorb it differently. You're less likely to build, uh, you know, toxic levels of iron. Same thing with other nutrients and, and compounds. So that's a great. Now yeah. here's the problem. Someone's like, oh well, I'd rather have it from food, but then they don't eat good. So now yeah. you've gotten the worst of both worlds. Right, right. Well, I think it's yeah, and I think it's different 
in today's age with all the fortification of vitamins and minerals that uh, make its way into almost everything uh, uh, versus like back in the day where, you know, people would have rickets or, you know, from real deficiencies because it just wasn't available, you know, in the mm -hmm. diet and things. So I think back then it mattered a lot more. Uh, in terms of like getting certain vit vitamins and nutrients, but today we they pretty much stuff it in most foods. That's why that's why salt has iodine. You ever notice that? Just yeah. regular old table spot salt. Yeah, they literally made it like a rule that yeah. you had to add it in the in the salt because people had iodine deficiencies. I mean, at the end of the day, I think it. I think there's tremendous value in everybody listening, doing blood work and getting a full panel and seeing that's where the best. where you're at. That's the best. And and because and and do that a couple times so you get a you know and spread it out. So you can get kind of an idea of what you're more than likely there'll be some consistent things that you'll see there. For example, with mine, I'm, I'm consistently low on vitamin D. I mean, yes, if I get more sun exposure and stuff like that, it seems to be a little bit better. But historically, I almost always test low. So I'm all consistently so supplementing. It's even more that. important these days to, right. to look at Dude, vitamin that's a D great, especially. That's a great example. I take ten, five to 10,000 IUs of vitamin D and I've been doing it for years and my levels are always in the middle. Yeah. So like you would think, uh oh, you're going to take too much, but I test regularly. So it's like, I apparently I need to take yeah. that much vitamin D. I know people that they took vitamin D, got tested. Oh, it got too high. Yeah. So, so you need to know, because if you don't well, know, right. you could be doing some Even problems. supplement. I mean, I just noticed from coaching and being out in the sun over the past few months, my elevated mood and just like energy and everything is yeah. insanely better. Yeah. So just getting outside as much as you can is big, big factor too. Next question is from R Goldstein 76. How can I combine the MAPS Prime exercises to create a daily routine that will rapidly increase the mobility in all my joints? I'm concerned that if I just choose a couple of random exercises from each zone, I may end up missing some of the smaller joints. Yeah, so think of it this way. You want to do a couple general whole body mobility movements. And then you want to place special emphasis on the areas that you need uh, the most work. Where so, you struggle the most. Yeah, it's not unlike you know how bodybuilders work out. Like a really good bodybuilder will go to the gym, and they're trying to build a very balanced aesthetic physique. They're not building everything equally, right? They're going to go to the gym and say, "I need more lats and I need more quads." So there's more work done there. They're not saying, "Let's get everything to grow at the same proportion," because now I'm going to look just as unbalanced as I did before. It's a similar strategy. So you want to work through the whole body, but your special emphasis is on those areas that you need help because uh, I'm going to tell you, you know, when you, when you really need, really wanting to improve mobility in a, in a trouble area, consistent daily frequency. Yeah, you can't is the best do enough thing. of it. No, you, can, you, you won't do, you, you won't overdo it. So you're better off picking the most egregious area and focusing on that. Even if you failed all three zones, let's say, you pick the one that is the war that is the you failed the worst and that limits you from doing some of the most important movements with good full range of motion or and with that's going to unlock all kinds of right. potential and just and just go go at it you know go be doing practicing those movements two three times a day see I, I I prefer only one or two movements really like one or two movements that are that are going to benefit you in that one of those zones and then just doing those multiple times a day as much as you can until you see significant progress there and then you don't stop those behaviors but what's cool is that when you unlock that new range of motion and you and you get to the point where you're you've perfected that movement now you can do strength exercises in your routine that just promote that range of motion and you, so i don't have to do the 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 combat stretch right. and the 90 90 stuff as much as i used to because i've worked on it so much now if i just do ass to grass squats or do like full overhead extensions for like zone one. Now those things promote that great mobility yeah. and I don't have to address it as much. Well, let's just talk about uh, focusing, hyper-focusing on your ankles and what that did for every part of movement after that, right? right. It's like a cascading effect that goes up the kinetic chain uh, where that was like at such a point of focus where if you know you were able to regain stability re regain that that type of mobility now i can unlock all these other movement potentials with squatting with you know even doing overhead pressing and being able to stabilize and control better so it's just like that's why we want to hyper focus on like sort of the most difficult area because a lot of times that's sort of the root of what uh, everything else has, has gone off from. Yeah, it's funny because MAPS Prime is the one program that we have that every single person watching or listening 
will gain tremendous value from. It doesn't matter what your workout is. I don't care if it doesn't matter what level you are. Doesn't, doesn't matter. It, it will improve your ability to do whatever you're doing uh, on your own. It, it, all of it. It'll improve your performance. It'll improve your ability to build muscle. It doesn't matter if you can t have targeted mobility work, improve your functional flexibility in very specific ways for your body. No matter what you're doing you'll get better at it. So it's like the one thing that I think everybody uh, will benefit this from. This is such a common question though. Like normally it's around fat loss or building muscle. Like everybody always wants to know like what is the most I can do at, at once to get the most results yeah. the fastest I possibly can. It's like, it's just, it's not a winning strategy to go after it like that. It's like, look at one or two things that you were never doing before that's going to benefit you the most in one of those zones and just, you cannot do too much of it. Between every commercial, we recommend at least three times, a day, you know, three times a day in there. But it doesn't say you can't do it nine times a day. Like you are trying to to create better movement patterns. The more you practice it, the better off. It's not like working out. It's different. You're not yep. you're not you know tearing down, breaking down muscle by doing this. We are just we're training stuff neurologically, and that the more we do it, the better off you are. So instead of throwing all kinds of different signals at it all at once and trying to do that as much as possible and overloading it and, and getting to a place where you can't commit to it, stick to one or two things and just practice it like crazy until you see a significant difference. Excellent. Look, if you like our information on our podcast, on our shows, you'll love mindpumpfree.com. Head over there, check out all of our guides. We have guides that help you build muscle, burn body fat, help you with nutrition, get better squats, better activity, better mobility. Again, it's mindpumpfree.com. Com. You can also find all of us on Instagram. So you can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.